Before the countries of South America, including Colombia, many Mesoamerican peoples were living in the Americas inhabiting the territory by around 12,500 BCE. The oldest archaeological finds are from the Magdalena Valley from the Paleo-Indian period, around 18,000 to 8,000 BCE. The year 1499 was the first arrival of the Spanish in modern Colombia, led by Alonso de Ojeda, who reached the Guajira Peninsula. Later in 1510, Vasco Núñez de Balboa founded the town of Santa Maria del Antigua del Darien in 1510, the first stable settlement on the continent. Conquistador Gonzalo Jiménez de Quesada led an expedition to the interior of Colombia in April 1536. This region was then named the New Kingdom of Granada for the ultramarine provinces of South America, governed by the president of the Royal Audience of Santa Fe. As it began in 1538, it would later be renamed the Viceroyalty of New Granada in 1717, permanent in 1739. The Viceroyalty ended in 1821 with the First Republic of Colombia. During the Spanish rule, European slave traders had begun to bring enslaved Africans to the Americas. Because the indigenous peoples were legally subjects of the Spanish crown, they couldn't be slaves, hence the introduction of Africans. Several forms of land ownership and regulation were established to protect these indigenous groups. Several rebel movements against Spanish rule were crushed or remained too weak. The last which sought independence from Spain began around 1810 and culminated in the Colombian Declaration of Independence. July 20th is now celebrated as Colombia's Independence Day. Various indigenous languages are still spoken, split into many families like Caribbean, Arawakan, the Quechuan, Tupian, but the largest of these is the Chibchan language family, but Spanish is the most dominantly spoken language. Colombian Spanish has various accents and dialects, influenced by the many languages spoken in the country. As such, this video is going to focus primarily on the features that you will find in most dialects. One part of Colombian Spanish is boceo, which is something a lot of countries in Latin America use, though it's limited in Colombia than in other countries. Take the sentence meaning, what do you want to cook? In Colombian Spanish, you'd say, ¿Qué quieres cocinar? Whereas in other dialects of Spanish, including European Spanish, you would ask, ¿Qué quieres cocinar? Word for word, it's, what you want, singular, to cook. To conjugate verbs with boceo, you take the final R from the infinitive and add an S instead. The stress moves to the final syllable, so it's Querés. Most of Colombia, and all throughout the Spanish-speaking world in Latin America, use the pronoun Usted rather than Vos found in Boseo or Tú. But in Cundinamarca and Boyacá departments, they use Sumerse, which originally came from Sumerced, which means your grace. Diminutives are used more often than in other Spanish-speaking countries. Diminutives are forms that indicate something smaller or cuter than the noun. Generally, there's ito or ita, but there's also ico and ica. These forms are used with t as the final consonant. Take the word for fruit. Fruta. In the diminutive, it's frutica, which means a little fruit. These endings can be used on other words, too. For example, take the sentence meaning my car is right next to the market. Mi carro está juntico al mercado. Notice that the preposition, junto a, meaning next to, has a diminutive ending. Pronunciation-wise, there are a few things that you might notice. Where many dialects have the sound h, this is often softened to h, like in English. For example, the word for people, you might hear it as gente, rather than gente. Colombia is varied on yeismo. This phenomenon is when ll and y have the same pronunciation. In the southern areas of the Antioquia and northern Santander departments, double L is pronounced as J and Y is pronounced as D. For example, the verb meaning to call is Llamar will be pronounced as Jamar. To say I, it's Yo, which is often pronounced as Dio. It sounds like J, but a little more palatalized. If the consonants B, D, and G are after or sometimes before another consonant, they're pronounced as stop consonants rather than fricatives. To say something, it's algo, but many speakers would pronounce it as algo. To say beard, it's barba, rather than barba. When B, D, and G are intervocalic, they consistently get elated, 
In other words, the consonants glide and it becomes a diphthong instead. To say tired in Spanish, it's cansado. But in Colombian Spanish, it's cansado. To say the name of the capital of Colombia, it's Bogota. But it's sometimes pronounced as Bogota. And the participle form of the verb meaning to feel, in other words, felt, in Spanish, it's sentido. But in Colombian Spanish, it's sentio. Vocabulary. Cubo. This means what's up, and is a contraction of the phrase que hubo, meaning what was there. Originally from the Paisa dialect, this word spread throughout Colombia and is associated as a part of Colombian Spanish specifically. However, I should point out that much slang used in Colombia in other vocabulary is found in other varieties in Latin America. The word for vase is vaina, but in slang it means thing. ¿Viste mi vaina? This means, did you see my thing? Bacán, bacano. This word means cool, and is used in other countries as well. Berraco. This means bore. This often means difficult, a very capable person, or to be angry. Many of these words in slang have different meanings depending on the context. Mi examen no estará berraco. This sentence means, my exam won't be difficult. Plata. This word means silver, but in speech it's often used to mean money. ¿Me regalas la plata? Can you give me money? Also notice the verb here. Regalar. This verb means to give a gift, but in slang it's just used to mean give. Pilas. This word means batteries, but it's often used as watch out. This reminds me of Mexican Spanish, aguas. Tinto. This means a cup of black coffee. Sardino. This means sardine, but it's often used to say a young person. Related is the word for child. Chino which is actually a loan from Chipcha. For example, take this sentence meaning those kids flunked the ninth grade. Esos chinos perdieron el noveno grado. The verb in this sentence, perder el grado, means to lose the grade. But in speech, it's more common to say, perder el año, meaning to lose the year. This not only means to flunk, but also die. Tragado. This means swallowed, but is used to mean having a crush on someone. Crude language. Multipliers are used to emphasize the intensity of a cuss word, Hijo de puta. which comes from Hijo de puta, which means son of a bitch. If you want to use the multiplier by two, you use the prefix re. re hijo de puta. Otherwise, you just use regular multipliers. Setenta hijo de puta. If talking about an object, an article is used before the cuss word. Tengo un problema el setenta hijo de puta. This sentence means something like, I have a ginormous fucking problem. Gonorrhea means gonorrhea, a very commonly used cuss word in Colombia. Marica This word means something a little too sensitive in English, but it means bro, dude, or shit. Note that while this word is socially acceptable, this word can still be offensive and refer to not safe word content. Marica, te tengo un chisme. This means, dude, I got some gossip for you. There's also a diminutive form of this word, maricadita, which is considerably less offensive and means a trinket or a small gift. Dialects of a language are expressive. Colombian Spanish is no different. It has a lot of its own slang and vocabulary, unique to its own country, is also spread around most of Latin America. In any language, slang usually derives from the speech of the common people, and from the common people it can spread around, from one country to another, and Colombian Spanish has that vocabulary. But let me ask you, if you speak an indigenous language of Colombia, how often do you mix it with Spanish? And for other people, which variety of Spanish is the closest to Colombian Spanish? I'm very curious about which dialect you think is closest to Colombian Spanish. Thank you everyone for watching this video of mine. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, peace.